Oh, yeah. Whenever you are talking about temperature control, you are controlling temperature. So, uh, the symbol is the T C, right. So, whenever you are talking about temperature control, temperature control means like if you see like see in heater treater system, temperature going up beyond certain value. So, in that case you have to control the fuel system, okay. So, that you have to sense first temperature, then you have to instruct the fuel handling system, okay. Temperature is going up, so reduce fuel supply, uh, fuel supply. So, the temperature will be going down slowly and if uh, again temperature is uh, below certain limit, again you increase fuel supply and you control the system. So, it will be actually these days everything is automatic. So, temperature you are sensing maybe thermocouple or other system then that signal will go to your fuel handling system automatically. So, that will control your fuel system ok. And flow control normally uh, surface production system you are not controlling separately flow you are controlling pressure that will control your flow system ok. Level control. Uh, actually, level control you have seen somewhere. Uh, can you remember toilet flush chamber? Okay. You, if you see the toilet flush chamber, uh, you will have one flush chamber, right? And you will have one knob. Maybe sometimes you will press some knob. Sometimes uh, you pull push down knob will be there. Okay. How does it work? So that is actually there is inside. If you open, there will be one water is there. One ball type sim system will be there. One stylus will be there like this ok. So, ball or floating device float when water level in the toilet flush chamber ok right. It will be like this some pipe will go and it will be flushing right. So, this uh, ball when uh, you press it. So, it will be opening certain valve open certain valve when opening certain valve fluid will be coming directly to your flush chamber uh, flushing your uh, this portion right. And when completely water gun, so that time your exhaust or exit valve must be closed here and your fluid must be entering right from main pipe. So, this valve will be controlling actually minimum and maximum limit. Again when fluid let us say this is closed bottom valve say valve A is closed and valve B is open ok and B open but again it should not be overfilling. After certain time it must stop also ok. If it is stopping then whole toilet area will be uh, splashed with water right. And if you are in city area, so there will be water limitation also, right. So, you cannot splash uh, unnecessary water. Uh, so, what happens? This, this one will be connected to some valve mechanism. So, that valve will be controlling this one and this one, both valves, A and B valve will be controlled using that floating arrangement, ok. So, how it is working? Let us say this is here and there will be some mechanism. Okay. So, when it is moving up after certain level, so it will be opening, if it is uh, reaching the top level, so it will be closing the inlet flow, ok. This is flow entry that will be closed, but when it is at the bottom or nearby bottom, so it will be opening the inlet flow, ok. So, it will be controlling inlet flow when it is closed, uh, when to close, when to open, ok. So, same mechanism is used for your surface production operation also. How? You have one separator ok. You create one floating device and you name it as level controller toilet uh, those mechanics they are using already this system actually ok. So, when uh, water level will be moving or oil level will be moving up beyond certain limit. So, that time your valve will be opening your fluid will go out, it, it will maintain minimum level, then again exhaust port will be closed. Again you allow water to move up, open it, again water level will go down, again so water level will go up and down, so within that range only it will allow to control the uh, level, ok. So, it will have interface, this will be interface controller 
another can uh, level uh, controller will be there um, for uh, file level controller okay so this way uh, level control work controller working fine okay oil treating this so is first you got two phase separator okay you got gas i'm not drawing all this controller whatever i taught just i'm making simplified thing so you are getting liquid okay now this liquid if put in three phase separator okay so three phase separator what are you getting uh, water oil gas so oil you got okay. now oil will have what it will contain still water still it will have gas because gradually you are reducing pressure so when you are reducing pressure gradually so some dissolved gas will be coming out every time okay every separate will gap will have certain dissolved gas coming out from the liquid okay so you got oil and uh, three phase okay in three phase separator you got oil water gas this oil whatever you are getting still it will contain certain amount of water certain amount of gas now there from oil again you try to remove water and gas now here emulsion treating th theories will come actually emulsion emulsion treating theory will come heater treater will come okay uh, electrostatic electrostatic precipitator will come electrostatic separator uh, or emulsion breaker will be there so those those mechanism will come okay we'll discuss later when will be specifically we'll discuss on oil <coughs> separating system so there uh, how emulsion uh, treating system will be put in place how heater treat will be working how this electrostatic system will be there so all these things we'll discuss then once oil removed gas and water part then you are putting this one into stock tank okay so stack tank and uh, we know the stock tank pressure will be like 14.7 psi or normal temperature and pressure uh, 60 degree ideally uh, but if atmospheric pressure and temperature is, is different so within that condition you are storing okay water treating system uh, so every stage uh, two phase three phase you are getting water 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 okay and water is not giving you money so you have to dispose properly i already told this environmental agencies are there they will stop your work if you are not treating water properly and you are disposing so hydrocarbon must be removed actually okay or you have to reinject in well bore certain well bore you have to create you have to reinject so that uh, surface aquifer zone will not get affected by your water so water let's say you are getting from well head this uh, fluid you are getting into your separator system maybe free water knockout uh, or any type of separator you can use then you are getting water uh, out here you are using one level controller right and here you see one pump is there if you are getting oil you are using one pump okay so there also level control will be there so if you have gas gas you can take out but again gas you will have controllers such i will drop controller also okay uh, so like this this is not level controller this is pressure controller actually okay in gas you are not controlling level but liquid case you are controlling level okay uh, so this is free water knockout or flotation chamber flotation chamber here again you are using lc level controller you are using pump and again you again you are treating you are sending to other system so flotation chamber actually there will be skimmer water is there so if you keep the water for certain time in certain with cool environment without any turbulence so that oil will be trying to settle on the top of the water layer okay that is called skimmer vessel 
Okay. So their skimmer vessel, uh, it will slowly it will be removing this uh, the top layer of crude oil. Okay. Again, you will put it water continuously, slowly uh, when what oil particle will be getting together, they will be creating bigger particle settlement rate will be quicker. So, I will discuss later, later how this settlement rate can be higher uh, and water that skimmer will be removing this oil particle as much as possible after that you are injecting or you have to handle properly, fine. Later we will discuss in details about water treating systems. Many uh, ways are there to remove the water particle from oil or uh, oil particle from water. So here more water you are getting and you are removing oil particle, okay. But in previous case, in oil case, you are removing water from oil because oil will be giving money. So you have to remove water, but here you have to dispose water. So you have to remove oil particle and you are not disposing the oil, rather you are using it. Gas dehydration. Now, from all the separators, you are getting actually gas, right? Like this, gas you are getting. Uh, so, gas you have to inject here, okay. And this is called contactor column, normally called contactor column, okay. So, the gas will have. H2S may be, it will have water, it may have some other impurities also, okay, CO2 also may be there. H2S is corrosive gas, okay, H2S it can give sulfuric H2SO3, okay. So uh, it can create acid, acid is dangerous. Okay, so H2S if it is there in your uh, gas, so you have to remove it. Okay, H2S uh, is your enemy actually in oil and gas industry. If you are getting very high amount of H2S, then you have to handle properly. Otherwise, it will create very much destructive things as it will be create uh, corroding all the metal equipment, leaking will be there, and hazardous to health also. Okay, so you have to handle H2S properly. Now. H2S you have to remove. Next thing is that you have to remove water also. Why? Water is not giving any heating value. So if you can remember your uh, higher and lower calorific value, HCV, LCV, uh, higher calorific value, uh, lower calorific value, lower calorific value okay so if you burn any certain amount of fuel let's say take xyz amount of fuel okay do chemical reaction i mean give oxygen react it then you check how much energy it is producing how much heat you are getting heat how you measure actually you know the volume you will measure the temperature how much temperature is increasing based on that you can calculate heat heat actually mass into specific heat into temperature rise. So that is your measurement of heat. So how much he heat you are getting from a fuel? Let us say I have one fuel with no water content. So I got this 100 calorie energy okay, or heat. Now I got another fuel, same fuel I took and small amount of water particle water is there. Okay, What will happen? Water will be at lower temperature, water will be liquid. When it, you are increasing temperature more than 100 degrees centigrade, water will be evaporating or it will create a steam. When it is creating steam, because of phase change, it will take latent heat. Okay. When it is taking latent heat, that latent heat it is using, but you cannot use that heat for your heating purpose, your cooking or anything, whatever your CNG vehicles, uh, you cannot use. So that means that is loss. So if certain amount of water is there in your gas, you have to remove it, otherwise that is loss actually, okay. That will create corrosion also, it can create hydrate, it can create blockage also, but it is not giving heating value. So whenever you are getting any fluid, you have to calculate lower va calorific value. If you have certain amount of uh, water already, so it will give higher calorific value, higher value, 
but that you cannot use. So, certain amount of energy will go to heat water to create steam, okay. So, that is not usable. So, total heat you are getting minus water taking the heat that is actually lower calorific value, okay, fine. So, for your uh, cooking purpose actually you will be using lower calorific value, upper calorific value you are not using. What is taking certain amount of it, it is not usable, okay. So, your whatever oil, whatever gas you get from well bore, it is mixed with water, right. So, lots of moisture content will be there. So, moisture content is there means some amount of H2O particle will be there in your gas already. Although you are reducing temperature, for example, in air also moisture is there, right, in atmospheric air, uh, but you cannot see, it is a superheated condition. Same, similar way, uh, some moisture will be there in your gas also. Okay. So, you cannot use that uh, energy, whatever moisture will be using. Okay. So, you have to remove that moisture. How to remove? So, you will have some glycol and other techniques. So, later we will teach in details. So, that technique will be removing the gas, fine. And H2S uh, if or sour gas, in oil gas uh, they say sour gas. If sour gas is there, H2S carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide will plus H2, it will create carbonic acid. Okay. So, sour gas is there, you have to remove that one also. If any other gas is there, you have to use certain mechanism and you have to remove that part. Then you have to send to customer. So, here this is called contactor column. So, contactor column or bubble column they will say, okay. it will have design like this. Okay. So, this gas will go from bottom and many type, uh, many trays will be there. These are called trays. Okay. This many trays will be there when gas is going through this and from top your uh, maybe amine mixture, amine mixture will be removing H2S or sour gas or you will be injecting uh, your glycol desiccant. So, that will be reducing your high, uh, water content and it will be moving down. Okay. So, uh, here rich mixture. Rich mixture. Rich mixture means like amine solution you took and it absorb already your H2S other things. So, that become rich mixture. So, that rich mixture will be going out and your dry gas or removed or sweet gas. When sour gas you are injecting, so the sweeter component that one you are getting from top. Okay. So, that gas you are getting from the top, from bottom you are injecting gas with uh, water and uh, H2S and you are injecting lean mixture, lean mixture of say glycol mixture or maybe your amine mixture. Okay. So, I am showing only one contactor column, there will be other contactor columns also. Okay. So, in same contactor column, you are not using glycol and amine, you will have amine separate contactor column, glycol separate contactor column. So, that we will discuss in details when we will discuss about your gas separation system, okay.